plan for a local food production, creating necessary infrastructure, organic foods, and intensification of corridors, farmers markets, um, uh, zone for flexibility, legislation, policy, and, um, that will uh, promote it in urban agriculture. Local energy, local district energy production, um, redundancy, disaster planning, increased in density, um, public transit, redundancy um, and diversity, mixed use, durability, economic diversification, and engagement. That's it, really. Those are the, the key strategies for making cities and communities more resilient. So, those key strategies, or those key ideas, I've summed up into 10 strategies. These strategies, there, there's probably more, and there's variations on themes, but I think from all I've seen in my career today, and, what I, and looking forward um, into the future as to what kind of concerns and problems are gonna be coming at us, these strategies will serve us very well in developing resilience within our cities. So the first one is, as the uh, World Cafe very obviously realized, is increasing density. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty obvious one. And why is it building resilience? Well, it's reducing energy, so it's making um, energy flows more sustainable, and it's increasing diversity and increasing flexibility. It's increasing diversity because there's more opportunities for different types of uses to, to locate in different places in the city. Um, and of course, it increases the flexibility of use. There's, the density means there's more space in a, in a smaller area, more people, more types of, of uses can, well, part of mixed use as well, can be included in that particular area. Um, this is a, and, and to uh, give some substance to that, that image that I just showed was uh, New York City, uh, turn of the century New York City, 9th Avenue. Um, good example of, of uh, mixed use, high density, low rise. Um, we're doing a, a plan for the central core in Edmonton. Again, this is the, we're advocating um, mixed use, higher density, creates vital communities, and is one of the um, key ingredients in building resilience. Um, mixed use itself, aside from just density, is important. Um, it leads to greater diversity and supports flexibility. Uh, and I'll give you an example of why. This is a, a project that we did uh, uh, in the 70s um, uh, in Vancouver called uh, uh, Granville Island. And the Granville Island is well known for being a rehabilitation of an industrial district. And what's really neat about it is it's got residential, institutional, it's got schools, it's got a concrete plant, it's got retail, commercial office, all functioning together. And not only is it a great tourist destination, in fact, it's considered one of the, the most successful tourist sites in Canada, it's a very, very successful commercial and retail operation. Now, why this, is, why this particular example is a good example of something that's resilient or would add resilience to a community, as opposed to this, is that if you looked at the two in terms of the number of um, products sold per week or the number of people employed, they actually may be similar. Actually, Walmart may have a little more. And yet, if one of the, I wonder if there's a laser on this thing, no. Um, if one of those little shops closes or a school moves out, it won't take the whole operation down. It wouldn't mean that everyone there that was employed would have to leave because the whole place closed down. It would mean that the uh, building or the, or the uh, site manager would have to go and find someone else to occupy that space. So it's got a very resilient um, ability to deal with small scale um, shocks and stresses. So economic turndown, a number of the stores close, but it doesn't kill the whole site. Um, whereas with the, the Walmart, if it shuts down, if for example, in the States, head office says we're not getting enough production, we're not getting enough revenue um, produced out of that location, close it down, it means it takes out the, a major source of employment um, as well as, as, as uh, retail activity 
for that community. So mixed use adds diversity, increases resilience. So here's another strategy. I mean, some of these seem disconnected, but they're all tied together with those, those seven attributes of resilience. Um, and I, the last panel was talking about this. Retrofit of existing fabric. Um, I'm an architect, and, and uh, we are always asked now by our clients, can you design us a lead gold building or lead silver building? And sure. And a lot of them are doing it because they want the, the gold medal, which was a brilliant insight on the part of lead or USGBC, Canadian GBC, when they were setting it up. Because I, know, I don't think people really care that much about whether or not you're saving so much energy. They just want to be able to say they've got that gold medal. But that aside, if we did all new buildings of lead gold or lead platinum, how much impact would that have on our cities in terms of the amount of CO2 that were produced? Almost nothing. Because the number of new buildings being created every year in a city is infinitesimally small compared to the number of buildings that exist. So the real gains to be made in reducing the kind of energy flows right now that cities require in order to heat and cool these buildings, because all these buildings are built in the 60s and they don't have much insulation, so they're basically like sieves to energy, it's much more effective to deal with existing fabric and insulate it more effectively. So the, the mayor, the last mayor of Toronto, Mayor Miller's reskinning program was a very, very smart idea. And, and the fact that it was called the Miller's uh, or the, the, the mayor's uh, reskinning program probably means that the new mayor won't support it, but who knows, we'll see. Um, and here's an example of, of what uh, is going on here. This is uh, being proposed by ERA and Graham Stewart working there. That not only would you use the um, opportunity to re-insulate the building uh, uh, as an opportunity to reduce the energy um, exiting from the building, you would also be able to use it to make the building cladding more resilient, run systems up and um, down the building that weren't there before, and actually add to the amenities of the building. So it's a way to increase the durability of buildings as well as to reduce energy flows. So a really smart thing to do. And you know this one, it's pretty obvious, public transit. Redu it does two things in order to build resilience. First of all, it reduces the amount of energy a city needs to, to survive. If you, if you have to drive a car, um, it's, hard, it's hard on you if gas prices are going up, but it's overall, cumulatively, hard on the city. It has economic impacts. Every dollar you have to spend on gas is a dollar you don't have to, you don't have to spend as a consumer on something else. So energy prices rising mean for a city that if everyone has to drive a car, then it's having a much heavier hit on the economy of the city than if a, a large percentage of people can take an alternative form of transit, public transit, and reduce those energy flows. It also, reduce, it, it also increases flexibility. It means that you can decide whether or not you will drive or take the public transit. It gives people that choice, that economic choice, in the future. You don't know when it's going to be needed, whether or not energy scarcity will be prices rising like this, or prices going up and then coming down and going up and then coming down. And those peaks is where it provides the, um, the citizens of a, a community with that flexibility. So again, building resilience into the community. Um, and then this is an example of, of taking that a step further. Um, John Yeser and I uh, were writing a paper for the city of Edmonton on how to increase resiliency in the city. And one of the things that we suggested to them was they look at their current plans for extending their LRTs to the outside of the ring road now. That yellow is a ring road that exists in Edmonton, and the dotted um, yellow line is not what we're proposing. That's a proposed continuation of the ring road for cars. Um, but you could easily see this in the future, that ring road, if you tied in the uh, LRTs, which are the orange lines, and the future LRTs, the orange dotted lines, with those little uh, uh, pink circles there, those could be um, connection points for future, say, electric buses that would all of a sudden turn the now ring road highway gasoline powered um, transportation system into potentially, if the transformation that Homer Dixon was talking about happens, an electric bus connected ring road system. So again, a lot of the things that are going to create resilience exist 